Mac OS Monterey. It's the new big update coming to Macs this year and I'm genuinely pretty excited about it. They came out with many new features that I've personally have always wanted for such a long time. So I'm very excited to break down my reactions to those as well as try to break down and explain what all of these features mean in the big picture of the future of Apple, MacBooks, and Mac OS. The first change has to do with FaceTime. I've wanted this forever, and they call it SharePlay. It allows you to enjoy content with people on FaceTime simultaneously. So that's movies, music, TV shows, or even share your screen. You can do all of that now within a FaceTime conversation. I absolutely love this. And anybody who uses FaceTime regularly like I do, will be very happy to know that Apple has finally brought this feature to FaceTime. They're also improving the mic quality on FaceTime. So when you're talking to people, FaceTime will do a better job of just isolating your voice and removing the background noise. I think they did a pretty decent job, at least from the demo that they showed. It seems pretty promising in my opinion. They added grid views if you're talking to a bunch of people at once. They also added portrait mode if you wanna have yourself more isolated in the video itself. But the most important thing that I think they have added was FaceTime links. You can schedule FaceTime calls and share these links with people on iPad, iOS, Mac, and even Android and Windows, and that's the key part. That's huge. I'm shocked that Apple actually even did this and allowed other users who don't have iPhones, iPads, or Macs into their ecosystem, their walled garden. However, I do think this is very smart and sneaky by Apple. I think they're actually trying to create another path for people to want to join and dive themselves into the Apple ecosystem. Think about it, as an Android or Windows user, if you're always joining FaceTime calls with all your friends who have iPhones or Macs, that's honestly gonna create another reason in your head of why you need to own an iPhone or Mac to get the ultimate FaceTime experience. Safari also got a huge makeover and I love it. It's a new minimalist streamlined tab bar design. It was redesigned to take up less space on the page and also match the color of the websites that you're on. In addition, all of the critical tools in Safari, such as the home button, share button, privacy, downloads, they've all been congregated into one little menu on the right hand side of the address bar. They also added tab groups, which is just fantastic by the way. You can now save and organize tabs into groups and access them later. You can even have these saved groups accessible via iPad, iPhone, and your Mac across all of your devices, and even share links to these saved tabs with other people. I think if we take a step back though and really look at this, for what it is. This is a huge performance gain for Safari. You should no longer feel the need to keep multiple tabs open all at once just because you don't wanna lose that like set of tabs. You can now put it into a group and have it not take up system resources and only access those set of tabs when you need to. It's a straightforward concept to be honest, but when you think about it, that's actually huge performance gains for Safari and another reason why Safari will just run better on Mac OS than any other web browser out there. Speaking of great apps like Safari, one of my favorite ones that I use all the time across all of my Mac devices is today's sponsor, Clean My Mac X. It's an all-in-one package to make your Mac run as good as new. It cleans a ton of junk and makes your computer run faster, just like it did the day you bought it. With the click of just one button, it scans for unnecessary junk, malware, virus threats, and performs system tasks to speed up your computer right away. It also has extra tools, and one of my favorites is actually the uninstaller. It does a better job of removing an entire application from your Mac, ensuring no leftover associated files will take up hard drive space. Download Clean My Mac X today in the video description down below if you guys are interested in checking it out. For anyone into productivity, you're gonna love the new Focus feature. In Apple's words, it essentially allows you to be in the moment for the task that you're trying to achieve. So for example, you can set up a work focus and with the click of one button, it will disable all of the apps that are not related to your work. It will only let messages and notifications go through that are only related to work. That's just one kind of example. Focus is customizable to you. So for example, if you wanted to have a personal focus where you only focused on connecting with friends and family and social media, you can do all that and disable all of your work-related apps and notifications. Overall, I like it. I think for someone like me who feels like they have such a busy schedule and needs 
all the time that I can get to accomplish everything that I want to accomplish for the day. Um, another tool to help myself focus and to sound out the noise is always a welcome thing in my opinion. Now I want to talk about the most exciting thing about Mac OS Monterey and that's universal control. It allows your Mac and iPad to work in a way that they never have before. So with a single keyboard and mouse or trackpad, you can control your Mac and iPad at the same time. So what this literally means is that you can move your cursor or mouse across from your Mac to your iPad seamlessly. This also means that you can type with your Mac keyboard while you're on your Mac and then quickly switch over to your iPad and also start typing on it with the same keyboard. This isn't a new idea, you know, this has been done by other companies like Logitech, but it always felt kind of not smooth and it just didn't really work right. But the way that Apple demoed it last night in WWDC, I really think that uh, it looks impressive. What's remarkable in my opinion is that you can just set it up to always have it on. So what that means is if I can just take my iPad and leave and come back, that mouse and keyboard connection should still be there hypothetically and I can just seamlessly start using my Mac and iPad at the same time. You can also use up to three devices at once. So that's a Mac, a MacBook, and an iPad. Like that's, that is just, that's awesome. Like. That is like the ultimate dream to be able to use all of your devices, no matter like the form factor or what it is, all at the same time with just one set of keyboard and mouse and trackpad controls. Of course, as much as I wanna get excited about it, we have to wait and see how smooth this actually is because you know other companies have tried this and it just, you know, it looked exciting on paper, but in real life, it didn't really work that great. But Knowing anything about Apple, they usually never release a new feature unless they got it right. So I'm very excited to see if they got this one right. This next feature is just very near and dear to my heart. And I don't think a lot of people are going to care about this except for audio fanatics. And that is you can now finally use your MacBook as an AirPlay 2 speaker. So for example, I have a bunch of HomePods and HomePod minis surrounding my house. I can finally add my iMac as an additional speaker. I can finally add my MacBook Air as an additional speaker. I just think that's awesome. It's just a nice, easy way to use the hardware that you already have to add more dimensions of sound and like a multi-room audio setup like what I have set up in my home. They also added shortcuts to Mac, so you can finally set up and automate sequences such as opening up two split view apps at the same time. So for example, I always use Grammarly and Safari side by side because I use Grammarly to type all my scripts and Safari for my research. So I can now create a shortcut where it will open both of those apps at the same time in the exact split view that I want them to be in. That's a very super basic shortcut and shortcuts can get as complicated as you want it to be. And you know, that's just a welcome addition in my opinion to Mac OS. Anyways, this is the end of the video. There's so much that I haven't covered and I do acknowledge that they talked about privacy, iCloud plus, live text, there's a ton of features coming to Mac OS, but I just wanted this video to focus on the things that I'm most excited about. Anyways, drop a like down below if you guys enjoyed the video, comment down below, hashtag Mac OS, and subscribe if you're brand new to the channel. We are on our road to 15,000 subscribers. You guys have no idea how every like, comment, and subscription goes such a long way in helping me produce videos here every single week. So any support you guys show is greatly appreciated. But anyways, I'll catch all of you guys in another video later this week. Peace.